Please welcome activist, author, and journalist Masi Alanijad. Masi, I, I, I know that feeling where you're trying to shore yourself up because the emotions are so heavy. You have faced the unimaginable. I saw you on with my colleagues over at GMA3. You cut your hair to illustrate to people that this is the amount of hair that we're talking about, potentially, or less. I don't have it now. <laughs> uh, this was, or less, that was exposed. I still cannot believe that. I'm here to explain everyone that in my beloved homeland, women are getting killed just because of her. You know? But it's still, still, women are resisting. School girls are getting killed. But the day after, they take back to the street, chanting, woman, life, freedom. Mm -hmm. These are my heroes. Mm -hmm. like, these are like, you understand what I say that these are like Rosa Parks of Iran, mm. no? That's why I cannot talk about this without getting emotional because my people in Iran, when they've been told by morality police for years and years, cover yourself, they were actually uh, referring to America. One of the women of my campaign, I, I launched a campaign eight years ago uh, ask women to, pra when they practice their civil disobedience, film themselves and send the video to me. One of the women were telling the morality police that I'm not gonna cover myself. Mm -hmm. And the morality police said that this is the law. You mm -hmm. have to do it. You know what she said? Mm -hmm. Slavery used to be legal. Wow. Yeah. This is the powerful woman of Iran. Iranian officials say that Masha Amini, the 22-year-old Kurdish woman, they say she died of natural causes. Human rights activists say that the morality police are responsible for her death. You mentioned them. For those of us who don't understand or have not been in this situation, what is it like? Are these people that are called, are neighbors calling the morality police on girls? How does this work? There are a bunch of police walking around. And uh, imagine me and you both. We just walk around. People are gonna come to you in the name of morality police, which they don't have any moral. Mm -hmm. We call them hijab police and tell them, tell you, tell me that cover your hair. Why? Because men cannot control themselves and then you will get raped by men. Mm. This is the fact. And what I myself experienced as a parliamentary journalist, I was just asking political questions. Mm -hmm. When they were mad with me being critical, they were not answering my question, attacking my sexuality, saying that first cover yourself. Mm. So I have too much hair. As you see, it's not even easy to cover them up. <laughs> so, but being harassed, being humiliated, being bullied just because of your hair, mm -hmm. it's not acceptable. Yeah. So these are, yeah. <laughs> I love your hair. Thank you. You pay a lot of attention to your beautiful hair. Thank you. But in my country, people make sure that your hair is not shown. Mahsa was only 22 years old and her Kurdish name, Gina, means full of life. Mm. They killed her because she loved her hair for a little bit, oh my God, for just a little bit of her hair. And another girl, Nika Shakarami, took to the street to support Mahsa, only 16 year old. She burned her headscarf. She got killed. <laughs> another woman, Sarina, she got killed, 16 year old. You know why I named them? Because you know that in America, when George Floyd got brutally killed, you were saying that, say her name, no, say, say her his name. name, say Breonna his name. Breonna Taylor, say her name. I want people to say their name. I don't want people just see people like in the Middle East, when we get killed, we are not numbers. Mm -hmm. we are not, we're not statistics. Yeah. I was part of a demonstration in America, Women's March. Yeah. And I was calling my friends and saying that, hey, I'm in the streets, I'm protesting, I'm shouting, my body, my choice. Mm. Nobody killed me, nobody arrest me. Yeah. But suddenly. But we are now, we're five weeks into this. People are wondering how much longer is there a breaking point? Will the government become more brutal to squash and to beat back the protests? This is a critical point. We're at five weeks in. How does this end? They, 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 the government took everything from us except hope. Mm. That's why. <laughs> believe me, believe me, the government has, the government, Iranian regime, they have only 
two options to kill more people, mm. which create more anger among society. Yeah. People get more determined. There is one slogan saying that Mi jangam, mi miram, zillat nemi paziram. It means that I fight, I rather die, but not live with humiliation. Mm. So you see, these yeah. are the people. Yeah. They made up their mind. They want to end gender apartheid regime. So another option for the government is just say, OK, we're going to abolish morality police. We're going to get rid of compulsory hijab law. No, this is not going to happen That's because compulsory happen. hijab is like the Berlin Wall. Mm. If this wall, if we get successful and tear this wall down, Khamenei, his regime is not going to exist. When we come back, I want to talk more about that because you've compared this to yeah. the fall of the Berlin Wall, but you've also challenged the people in the audience, people watching, even myself, to see this as we saw the George Floyd killing. More after the break. There's a healthcare crisis going on in Iran right now. Many of the young injured protesters feel unsafe to go and see a doctor. A lot of doctors have fear of taking care of these injured protesters because of the repercussions. I started getting images of people with multiple injuries, things like fractures, burns, and they were asking me how to take care of it. I estimated around 400 to 500 messages a day. A young individual who got shot with the pellet guns, he got multiple holes in his face, his head, and several that actually penetrated his eyes. He could not go to the hospital and get surgery. He ended up going blind. We're talking about a young person who went out just to protest and he can't see with both eyes. Welcome back. The gripping updates are coming in daily from the women in Iran who are bravely protesting decades of regime abuses. We're back with journalist Masi Alinejad, who's faced death threats and kidnapping plots for being galvanizing women um, so that they speak up. We just saw this video. Um, that is Dr. Mirati. And as I said to you before, and I said to our audience, in daytime TV, you know, we, we laugh together. We even cook sometimes around here. We do a lot of inspiration. And it was a little nervous, nerve wracking for me and my team today to do this show in this amount of time because people would say, this is not the place. But I said, this daytime, is the place. this is the place. This is, this the, is place. the place. This, this, is, the this place. is the place. You know why? Because, guys, I love you. I love you. I love your energy. This is all we need. We need your audiences because we need to educate people around the world that ordinary people who love to laugh, yeah. who love to be happy, who love to be their true self, who deserve to have this kind of show, they're getting killed. Yeah. These are ordinary people who are leading the revolution in Iran. This is the right place. You yeah. know, for years and years, I have been warning. Yeah. yeah? I have been warning. Can I be honest with you? You can. Eight years ago, when I launched my campaign, I was begging everyone to hear the voice of Iranian people who are saying no to forced hijab. Mm -hmm. Beautiful videos mm -hmm. from women inside Iran called Yasaman Aryani. She walked unveiled. She got arrested. I was wanting, I was begging media, pay attention to her. She's my hero. She's the Rosa Parks of Iran. What happened? People ignored me, mm -hmm. ignored Yasaman Aryani. Instead, they put the blame on us saying that, you know, this is the law. And then you're putting women inside Iran in danger? Yasaman Aryani's mother took to the street and said that now you arrested my daughter, mm. I am the voice of my daughter. Mm. They are both are in prison yeah. right now. You know, that, that, that just gave me chills because I, my dear friend Whoopi Goldberg was just here. She has a movie about Emmett Till and how his mother, Mamie Till, said he can't speak, but I will speak for him. Yeah. And you will see That's what we've done. You have compared it. I saw you speaking somewhere and you said this, you would like to see people around the world as we showed up for George Floyd, as we should have shown up for Breonna Taylor, quite honestly, um, be there for the women. What can we do? People feel helpless. I know I always say, call our senator, call them, but sometimes that just feels like chatter. No, Thank you. My audience no, is loud. They will tell us what they no, think. I'm going to tell what your you audience, you're do? doing a great job by calling your senators, yeah. by calling your representative. They are working for you. It will that you move elect the needle? Them, With so much happening but, in the world right now, that will move the needle. Most important than this, mm -hmm. I was part of Women's March. Mm -hmm. Why we don't have International Women's March for women of Iran and Afghanistan? Yeah. What is different yeah. between girls from the age of seven get kicked out from school if they don't cover their hair? I'm not allowed 
I'm not allowed to get a passport without getting permission from my husband. I'm not allowed to travel abroad without getting permission from my husband. I'm not allowed to be a judge. I'm not allowed to be a president. I'm not allowed to dance. I'm not allowed to go to a stadium. I'm not allowed to sing, to sing. Can you believe that? I have a good voice. I can sing for you. <laughs> but why? So this is the time. I know that people in the West, they eat their popcorn. Mm -hmm. They watch uh, The Handmaid's Tale series. Mm -hmm. But believe me, your entertainment is the reality of our wow. life in Iran. So take to the streets. Take to the streets. I mean, it's not difficult. Just call your people, human rights organization, take to the street and say that my body, my choice, mm -hmm is about women everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. We know that, before I let you go, I've got to talk about it again, because this is so urgent. There have been many more arrests of the protesters. Um, there's a notorious prison there, am I saying it right, Ivan Prison, where on Sunday, local activists posted viral video of a fire, massive deadly fire at this prison. At least eight prisoners were killed and more than 60 were injured. Um, when you see this, and when you call out for help, and your life is still in danger in all of this, what gives you strength? You know, let me tell you one story. When the Iranian regime actually made a fake law on Iranian state TV saying that Masi was raped by three men, believe me, if I got raped, everyone was gonna know, because I'm gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. That was a fake news to discredit me. In their mindset, if you get raped and you're on vague, it's your fault. Mm. You know what happened? A lot of women said that, you know, still, uh, Massey, you're our voice. They couldn't stop uh, women by discrediting me in that they way. They jailed your brother, you say? They put my brother in prison to punish me. They brought my sister on TV to disown me publicly. Can you believe that? They arrested 29 women and they took them on TV to denounce me. My heroes were on TV and denouncing me. They, this is what they do. They made a law saying if anyone sent videos to Masi Alinejad, I'm gonna be charged up to 10 years prison. I'm gonna tell you what encouraged me. Mothers for justice. Those whose, yeah, mothers whose children got killed. Their son, their daughters got killed in Iran in a bloody November protest. They took the picture of their beloved one. They went to the street and they said that my son got killed in th this street. Now I'm his voice. Massey, be my voice. <laughs> These are my heroes. Why should I be scared? <sighs> what is the difference between my life and the life of Nika, the life of Pejman, the life of Puya, the life of Sarina? You know, there are, I feel guilty when I forget some of their names. Mm. These are my heroes. I, I'm not scared of being killed in America. If they kill me here and it's gonna make awareness, people around the world can get united and say that we have to end this Islamic terror, then come and kill me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, darling. Thank I you love so you. much. We this is what we need. You know, Masi. I need a hug. I need a hug. Yeah, you can have it. I need a hug. I don't want to, you know. We need the sisterhood. You got it. We need the sisterhood. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you, the audience. Thank, Thank you, you so much.